Hello, this is part nine of a 10 part series on how to take compelling photos. The goal of these tutorials is one thing, to take better pictures and avoid mistakes and mishaps. It's not about the camera equipment you have, it's about a mindset and an overall approach to underwater photography and work and effort that you put into it that starts well before the dive trip and goes during the dive trip and even after the dive trip. There will be subsequent tutorials on specific techniques. This is just the 10 step approach. And we're on step nine right now, develop a specialty. Um, being an underwater photographer, you might find that you have one camera, maybe a point and shoot camera, where you always shoot available light. There are a lot of techniques and skills that perhaps you don't have. But one thing you can do is develop your own specialty or special niche or skill. For me, it happened to be shooting macro of the eyes of marine animals. Being an ophthalmologist, that sort of, I was drawn to the eye, okay? I also mentioned earlier that my favorite dive site is the Blue Heron Bridge. We sort of specialize in seeing all the vast array of uh, animals and marine life that we can document in that one setting, the Blue Heron Bridge in West Palm Beach, Florida. Here's a few examples of some things you might decide as a diver to specialize in. Uh, here's some of the pictures I've taken of eyes, and uh, you can see many, many more examples of eyes of aquatic animals at my website, theaquaticeye.com. Here's some uh, lobster. This is a close-up of the eye of a cornet fish in West Palm Beach. This is a close-up of an eye from a side view showing the cornea of a balloon fish also taken at the Blue Heron Bridge. And this is a, a macro picture of a portion of the lens and iris of a scorpion fish taken at, in carousel. This is a close-up of the eye showing the iris and pupil of an octopus. Another specialty that one might find is portraits. I find portraits very compelling because you can show behavior, personality of the animal, sometimes even sort of expressions. You can catch them with different angles. This is a scorpion fish. This is a side view of an eel. This is a portrait shot of a Caribbean uh, reef shark. This is a very close macro shot of a seaweed blenny. This is a side view portrait shot of a seahorse. And this is a portrait of a sand perch. Uh, I also find it interesting to take pictures of my dive buddies, friends and family who also go diving. This is a picture of some of my dive buddies on a dive trip. This is a close focus wide angle of an eel and one of my dive buddies in Grand Cayman, another diver and a turtle, a diver and an angelfish, and a diver and a piece of coral. And uh, my wife diving with a juvenile scorpion fish. This is a picture of my dive guide on a shore dive uh, in Seattle, looking at these beautiful giant uh, uh, sea anemones. You could have a specialty of wrecks. A lot of people are very interested in wrecks. Or you could even shoot abstract, generally close-up shots when you're so close or the angle is so unusual that the viewer is drawn by the beauty or the interesting aspects of the photo, not necessarily even knowing what it is. For instance, some of these shots here. This is the teeth of an eel. And close-up of uh, the scales and patches on a fish, a file fish a super macro picture of the eye of an octopus, or a flamingo tongue's body. Close focus wide angle is a technique where we use a wide angle lens and get close to the subject and then with size perspective distortion, the diver or something in the background looks smaller. This diver was really only two feet behind the angelfish, but it looks like the angelfish is much bigger than the diver. Also, you get such great depth of field with a wide angle lens, almost everything remains in focus, even at various distances. You can see here the diver in the background and the coral in the foreground. This is called close focus wide angle. We can do split levels. If we have a wide angle lens with a dome port, okay, we can be partly under the water and take a picture of what's going on underwater and topside at the same time. This can be a little bit challenging with the lighting and we'll have talks about this in more detail on subsequent uh, videos, but in general you can see things going on in, in, in two different levels at the same time. Or a sea urchin underwater and some palm trees and a sky in the background. 
You can even use reflections in the very shallow under the surface. Take a picture of a fish with a reflection. Very interesting things that can be done. You can experiment with super macro and have an external or various ways to get even more magnification. And we can look at this part of high magnification of a fireworm and create quite beautiful images. Or like we talked about before, you can concentrate on black and white. You don't have to worry about color balance because you can convert things to black and white and eliminate the distraction of color. And you can get quite compelling pictures. And some photographers have made their career just with black and white photography, like this school of Barracuda in uh, Grand, Grand Cayman. So this ends this one, number nine, develop a specialty. You don't have to be skilled at every aspect of underwater photography. You can pick one thing, a specific location, one subject, one style, like macro, available light, black and white, close focus wide angle, and develop a special niche and really become an expert and very skilled at that one thing. Okay, the last series in this 10 step series is number 10, review, modify, and show your images. And we will be talking about that next. Remember, you can download this entire outline for free at my website, www.theaquaticeye.com. I would welcome any comments. Thank you for your attention.